Welcome to Mission Park Cares. And today we're going to take you to a historic home right here in the heart of San Antonio. We'll share the story behind the family that helped make this house famous. And then we'll get the latest of the exciting future of the Hemisphere. Get ready for an original San Antonio story. Now, Kristen, you need to introduce us to our dear friend, Ron Herman. Ron, I know I'm so excited to hear this whole story. Can you start from the very beginning and tell us how the Herman family got here from Kansas City? They actually came from Western Kansas. They, uh, my great grandparents and grandparents uh, got on a ship in Germany and uh, arrived in New York. My great grandparents went on to Western Kansas and bought some farms. My grandparents came they had nothing. I think he had $86 when they got off the train in western Kansas, uh, just east of Dodge City. And they homesteaded a 80-acre tract south of Kinsley, Kansas. He didn't like the soil there. They lived in a Saudi there. Uh, they bought one farm, and before you know it, uh, he accumulated uh, over 3,000 acres of really good land. And uh, when World War I was starting, of course, wheat prices skyrocketed, and uh, he did very well. His efforts had paid off, and uh, he made a lot of money. And uh, so he kept his farms and asked a priest when he was getting a, a haircut in the county seat, where could he go where they had good music and spoke German? And the priest said, San Antonio, Texas. This is my grandfather and grandmother, William and Augusta, taken probably in uh, Kinsley, Kansas, the county seat, before they migrated here. Where did they live here in San Antonio? 138 Goliad in Hemisphere. That house was very nice. They had a, a my grandparents didn't like going upstairs, so they t made a bedroom in the northwest corner. And here's the way it looked when my grandparents lived there. Dad wanted to take photos so the family would know how it looked before it was improved by the city. <laughs> here's the carriage house where uh, their operations are centered now. It was in the back of the house they moved it. Back with a wonderful myrtle tree. I've never seen one like it since. We only uh, uh, celebrated Christmas and Thanksgiving at the Herman House, sometimes Easter, but it was always a big event. But we did not, I did not live there. My dad grew up there, and a couple of aunts grew up there. My grandmother and my aunt always made, made, made us feel welcome, a part of the home. And uh, my brother and I, as I mentioned, slept there often when they were, and stayed there when my parents were traveling, which was frequently. The Herman House is such a beautiful part of this entire Hemisphere Park. Dick, do you know the plan for this house? Well, let's go meet Ann Krauss and let's go find out. You know, I'm with Ann Krauss and Ann, thank you so much for meeting us down here at this little house. And you're gonna tell us a little bit about the house, the name behind it, the history behind it, I hope, and all that sort of stuff. But first and foremost, tell me a little bit about what you actually do downtown. Well, we are creating one of the world's great public places right here at Hemisphere. San Antonio hosted the World's Fair in 1968, right. brought over six million people to our city. And when the fair doors closed in October of 1968, there was no plan about what to do with the space. 
And so unfortunately it fell into decades of neglect. But I'm very pleased to tell you that we are now executing a plan to create it, uh, recreate it if you will, into the Central Park of San Antonio. It's gonna be a 40 acre urban parks district where people can work, live, and play. Okay, and, and so you said we, who is we? So a city council stood up the Hemisphere Park Area Redevelopment Corporation in 2011. Andres Andujar is the CEO. And in 2013, it became very apparent to him that municipal bond funds alone were insufficient to execute a world-class vision. So he hired me to set up a separate 501c3. It's charitable and it's the Hemisphere Conservancy. And our team's only job is to raise philanthropic and federal funding to augment the city funding so that we can truly create a world-class place in the heart of San Antonio. Well, Anne, you know, we're on the porch here of a, of a, of a beautiful home. And uh, tell me a little bit about this home, if you'd be so kind. This is my favorite historic structure here at Hemisphere because of the people that are connected to it. It is the Longini Herman House. It was built in 1892-93, and Mr. Longini then sold the house to Mr. Herman, William Herman, who was married to Augusta Herman. And they were the grandparents of my favorite donor, Ron Herman. Ron Herman, we love Yay, Ron. Hey, Ron's such a <laughs> wonderful man, a prince of a guy. And one of the benefits of my work here is that I get to meet wonderful people like you and Ron and many others in the community. And so Ron has fond memories of being with his grandparents and his aunts and uncles and cousins in this house. He remembers Christmas and Easter here. And so members of the Herman family lived in this house between 1916 when they purchased it and 1965 when they conveyed title for the land and the house to the city of San Antonio to make way for the World's Fair. It was used as a Filipino restaurant from April to October of 1968. And then when the fair was over, it pretty much got boarded up and it was really sad and when I came to the Hemisphere team in 2014 we had feral cat colonies and squatters living in it and this is a Victorian eclectic masterpiece and we want to bring it back to life. You told me about the outside of the house and how you work that. What about the inside? Well the inside was once as glorious as the outside is today and um, back when William and Augusta Herman were living in the house William hired German painters to come and do paint, paintings on the walls. And before they conveyed title to the city, uh, they came and rolled those paintings up and Ron had them for a very long time. Unfortunately, the inside is not so beautiful today, but we're working on that one room at a time because we want to demonstrate proof of concept to other funders. So um, the Herman family, Ron leading the charge on this, have pooled some philanthropic gifts together so we can bring the front parlor uh, back to life and then we can walk people through this space and they can see what philanthropic investment can do to bring this home back to life once again. This is just one home I think of several others. How many homes do you have that you're really going to be working you know in this small group of beautiful beautiful properties? We have 21 historic structures that were saved from the wrecking ball and some of them are are uh, farther along on their journey than the Longini Herman House. So in the Anaguana Garden, just south of here, we have um, businesses operating out of these rehabilitated homes. We have Doe Pizzeria, Commonwealth Coffee House. There's a Bombay Bicycle Club location coming in. We have the Paletaria, Kunstler Brew House. So lots of exciting businesses operating out of them. So what we do is we take a stabilized home on the exterior. We had enough bond funding from the city to arrest the neglect on the exterior, but that's where the city funds ran out. So we focus philanthropic efforts on one house at a time and we bring it up to code. And then what we do is we, we publish a request for interest. And we try to get a small locally owned business to come operate out of the house and serve park visitors. Fantastic. So Ann, really kind of what you're telling me is we have obviously Southtown and the King William area, and then you have the Pearl a little bit to the north. So you're really gonna be more of the central focus of the heart of our city, correct? We are smack dab in the heart of downtown San Antonio and delivering, like I said, it's a world-class park to our city. We're so incredibly proud and privileged to be able to do it. Dick, did you know there's a lot more to the Ron Herman story? I believe it. I hope you got Ron to share all that with us. Well, just listen to this. So tell us about your immediate family. Of course. I had three older siblings. My oldest 
sister was Aline Radke. My next one was Jeanette Jaffe Longoria. My third sibling was Albert Don Herman. And then I brought up the rear, probably unanticipated, <laughs> uh, six or eight years later. My oldest sister, Aline, married a dentist uh, and lived in first Eau Claire, and then he started teaching at the University of uh, Dental School. And Aline was always busy with charitable goods. She really loved uh, giving her time to various charities. My mother always said Jeanette heard the beat of a different drum. <laughs> <laughs> and she did. She was uh, very, very interesting. Uh, she loved people. She was very gregarious and was always avant-garde on everything she did. She raised a lot of money for various charities too. Thanks to her, the Santa Rosa Children's Hospital got started as, as a result of one of her children, Jennifer, uh, being very ill and she saw that there was no children's hospital, so she started the drive for the Santa Rosa Children's Hospital. And then my brother went to law school before I did, and uh, he was in retail. Uh, he and his family are still involved in retail. And uh, then I went to law school, as I said, and then got into business a few years later. So we'll switch gears a little bit, and I want to learn more about Hotel Havana. I mentioned I've stayed at the Havana when Mr. and Mrs. Chaffee ran it. I stayed there frequently when my parents were out of town, and I fished in the San Antonio River. Mr. Jaffe always sat at a desk in the back of the entrance, close to the back door. Mrs. Jaffe really ran the maids and other staff that they had at the hotel. and But she always treated me just like a son when I stayed there. She was so sweet and he was very nice. But uh, and he and my dad would meet periodically across from Travis Elementary on Maine. And at that time there was a, an ice station there and they would share a couple of beers. <laughs> so they were friends and uh, I think the family was generally harmonious. Now tell us about you. What, tell us about you and your family and, and your career. Well, I've been blessed in so many ways. I was born in uh, 1934, December 21st, and uh, right in the height of the Depression, and uh, was so happy. My mother always fed us three meals a day. I learned, uh, I guess, to be somewhat um, interested in helping various causes and being philanthropic because of the example my mother gave. and. Uh, being the youngest of uh, the four children, my uh, sisters took good care of me. Uh, I went to Thomas Jefferson High School, as did all of my uh, siblings, and graduated, went to the University of Texas, and then my dad said, come home. You." you're qualified to go to St. Mary's Law School and you need to go to law school like your brother did. So I came back, went to law school um, and never regretted it. Uh, it's been very helpful to me in my business career, even though I didn't practice law very long. Ron, you're at a stage in life that you've experienced so many things and, and you've learned so much. What is it about life that, that you've learned, that you've experienced, and that, that you could share with us. Thank you. I've been so blessed to have wonderful mentors, wonderful spouse, 
I, uh, I can't tell you how important it is, but the one thing that is the most important is to be a person of integrity. When you tell someone something, you don't speak with a forked tongue. You always lay out whatever it is, good or bad, but you give advice or you give friendship, but uh, always be honest. And I've tried to mold my life around that concept. Dick, you told us there's some exciting new developments coming to Hemisphere. I'd love to hear about all of that. Well then, you know what we should do? Let's go back to Ann Krauss for the rest of the story. And you know, you describe everything down here as the Central Park of, of San Antonio, and I love the way you say that, it's beautiful. So tell me about kind of the master plan, if you will, about the rest of this beautiful park. We're really turning this into a district where people can work, live, and play. So three park phases total. The first is Yanaguana Garden. And since we opened, we've had over 4.2 million visitors, making us the second busiest park per acre in the state of Texas already. But what's really exciting is the flagship park, Civic Park, which is underway right now. So we have 14 acres total, nine acres are green space, and the remaining five acres are developable parcels. We are putting in two apartment complexes. We're trying to help restore some of the residential density that was lost through eminent domain for the fair in the 60s. The first phase of Civic Park will open to the public in three months. And what that has is it has a tree-lined promenade. There is a water feature that we call the acequia to mimic the historic acequias that the settlers used to water their crops. And that acequia spills into five large springs at the southern part of Civic Park. And then just to the east of the promenade and the acequia is a slightly smaller than two acre great lawn. And that lawn can hold 10 to 15,000 people for a concert or an event or when the Spurs win their next championship. Right. Won't that be great? And so September 29th, uh, Civic Park, this first phase will open to the public and that will be in conjunction with Jazz Alive, the concert series. So that's gonna be fabulous. The second phase of Civic Park will be some hardscape along, the, uh, along Market Street and at the corner of um, South Alamo and Market Street and that will open at the end of next year. And then the whole park will be ready when San Antonio hosts the men's uh, NCAA Final Four Championship in April of 2025. We are so excited about that. So you said that there was a first phase, a second phase, there's got to be a third phase. You are correct. <laughs> um, we are going to be building the third and final park of the Hemisphere Series at the base of the Tower of the Americas, which is the iconic structure that was built for the World's Fair. And so what we heard from the public for Tower Park is they want a community garden and offer things that Yanaguana Garden and Civic Park do not. So things we're talking about are a sports court, so perhaps some basketball and pickleball. We have been in talks with the Gonzaba Foundation to develop an area for older adults to come get exercise. And as philanthropy meets with the big vision, the master plan for Hemisphere to create one of the world's great public places, we'll continue to add amenities that make sense there. Tell us, how does the community get in touch, be able to even discuss these, these opportunities? All of the information about contacting us can be found on our website, which is very simply www.hemisphere.org. There are actually four different things that we raise funds for that may not be intuitive. So the one that's obvious is construction. Secondly, historic preservation. Thirdly, we have environmental initiatives. When you de deconstruct a convention center, guess what? You're not left with any shade. So we're planting 200 more trees at the Civic Park, and they're not saplings. We want them to have shade the day they go in the ground, and they're $7,000 a piece, which is a heavy lift. So we created a really neat augmented reality tree donor recognition system. Each tree has its own QR code. And if you go up with your smartphone, it'll pop up a picture of the donor or the people that the donor wants to honor. So over half the trees have been sponsored at Civic Park already. Isn't that wonderful? Oh, that's exciting. We're very proud of you. Thank you so much for allowing us to come down here and spend a little time. I know how busy you are, but we appreciate all you do. Thank, Thank you, you so, so much. much. Thank you. Mwah. I want to thank the Herman family for sharing a portion of their story with us today. And I want to thank the Hemisphere Conservancy for keeping our history alive right here in the heart of San Antonio. We're proud to bring you good stories about great people and always remember, we love you. And at Mission Park, it's our mission to care. <laughs>